Good morning. So uh, um, last time I did a video, I was on my kit bag. And many, many people messaged me and said, Ben, could we go into more detail of what you use and when? So I'm just going to spend a few minutes this morning just going over what I carry in the car and for why this time. So okay. I've just laid out some of the essentials I'll go over in individually. So this is what I tend to carry all the time, not including nutrition and hydration stuff. So let's go over these one by one. So starting cartridge wise, okay. It's been the Game War Dark Storm since the, since the release. So here I've got eights, seven and a half, six and a half. Okay, so we've got three different boxes. Okay, eights. Pretty much, I would use eighty percent of the time. Uh, if I'm going to shoot a hundred birds, I carry um, four eights in the bag, one in my pocket, in my right pocket. I carry two seven and a halfs, one in my left pocket. So I do go overloaded, but you never know what you're going to get. So. Eights I would use near enough all the time, unless there's something that's at distance and also slow or edge on. Um, if it's showing me the belly, that number eight will do serious damage because I tend to shoot half choke or modified at everything. I'll go over choke shortly. Um, so the number eight is 2.3 millimeters. The number seven and a half is 2.4 millimeters. So that's what I tend to use a majority of is the two point is the two point three the number eight. Um, as I said, if I've got a long crow that's stalling, a long rabbit, or an edge on cross, or maybe even a long trap shot that I'm not seeing dome or belly on, I will reach for the seven and a half, which is a two point four. Um, every now and again, especially when I'm shooting fitas second barrels or something, I will carry a two point five millimeter, which is legal in fitas, which is the six and a half. Um, I don't shoot many of those. I carry 10 or 12 in the bottom of my bag and that tends to get me through. Um, I always just stock up at a major event, just making sure I carry them. Unless I'm at uh, Charles Bardot's ground in the salon shooting the Euro Cash when I shoot majority of the six and a half because we know what we're going to get. So for me, picking the ammunition depends on distance, but more so speed. A 40, 50 yard Batu, I'm happy to shoot it with a number eight. A 40 yard stalling crow i will probably go to a seven and a half so it's not the distance that matters it's the velocity of the clay you want impact on impact not just one stall and you're letting the pellet do all of the work so i'll go up to a bigger pellet size to generate a bigger a bigger shock wave and velocity carried at range okay moving on to choke tubes i use the briley plasma have done for years I tend to shoot 220s, but back a long time ago, I shot more of the number 15s, as you can see, and I still shoot this a lot now, depending on where I'm shooting. So 15s and 20s would be my go-to choke. Um, I tend to put two of, I'm either shooting two 15s or two 20s, depending on the mood I'm feeling. I, I tend not to flip around too much anymore. The 25s and 30s that I carry, so the 25 here, this is merely for game. Um, I shoot 25s and 30s when I'm shooting game. Um, also on that, I've got some of these here. This is what I shoot my game with and all of my students shoot is the Game Boy 36 gram 4 fiber wad. You know, we like to look after the countryside now, but that's what I shoot all of my game with a 36 gram 4. I do shoot some threes, but not very many. This put in the right place will bring absolutely anything down. Um, I do shoot those in the black gold and the Dark Storm. As you can see, the difference is the uh, F2 Gordon system, the recoil reducer. Um, both of them are phenomenal. This is just a little bit a little bit softer. If you do struggle with recoil and you want to shoot some of the higher stuff, you can drop into the, uh, into the Dark Storm. So that's a little bit more on cartridges and chokes. When it comes to earplugs, I use the Vario um, Revolution 6s. So I've got six different settings, but I tend to use... When I'm game shooting, I will have them on GameKeeper. I want to hear as much as I can. When I'm teaching, um, I do put them on a high settings because I want to converse and understand what the student's saying. When I'm competing, I tend to change the settings. I'll have one on clay mode and one on um, on silent almost. I only listen through my right ear to uh, to the referee, etc., etc. So I tend to use these. Well, I use them all the time, but I do use two different settings in each ear. And I'd say I change for game. You know, these are simply a necessity to what I use. Um, they're custom made to me. 
I was born deaf. I had lots of operation on my ears and they're the first people that have been able to make them where they stay comfortable. My, my ears get very, very painful, especially when flying. So I have the stub very, very short so it doesn't protrude into my ear. But after all the tests that they did, I'm still getting the best benefits from these. Um, so that's what I use in my ears is the Varios. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Moving on to the, uh, to the peelers. Um, I've not got my full selection here. I've left some in my father's vehicle. That's, that was the last vehicle I went in with competition. But I've got the majority here. So the last time I went shooting, it was a very dull very dull day so i had the pls on a very light lens enhances makes things look far brighter than they are um i use this at night time also so if i'm shooting in any any kind of light problems i'll go to these um i have the new mondial arms here um still playing around with them getting them on the right settings but these will be a game changer for people um that struggle with sort of glasses steaming and things like that i've left this one loose so you can change the angle of the frame to match your face so you don't touch in your eyelashes, touching your forehead, etc. So I've got these in the bag. Um, another set of frames here with the uh, 52 CHC, another favorite lens of mine. I do like this a lot. I started to use this more when the 44N was stopped being produced. So that's another go-to lens of mine. I've not done much work with these two, but I'm excited to try them. So I've got the new Cherry, the new Cherry lens and also the 60 CHCW. I'm looking forward to trying them. Um, another go-to of mine is, uh, we've, we've got the lemon there. Uh, I do use the new 50, the uh, new 18 CED a lot. That's the ones that's not here, but also the uh, 10 when the sun is just brutal. So like I said to you before, I have lots and lots of lenses that allow me to get the very, very best out of my performance. Um, I tend to so use the 18, the 18 CED a lot as well. That's another favorite of mine. Um, I tend not to go into a shoot with a preconceived idea of the lenses I'm going to use. I'm very much um, try them on on the station. Um, it's not like, I think with the sugar levels, the gym work that I do, my eyes can change dramatically from event to event. So I'm, I'm not one of those people that say, oh, I use this lens in this condition. You know, the food intake that I've had affects how I see things. So my lens choices is always down to how I see them at that event um, and I think that's important that you understand that your eyes can change your equipment needs to change to match them so that's a far more detailed and I've never really spoke about this stuff before so that's a really detailed inlet into the kit that I use um, we did the hydration with uh, Daniel David the other day so that's just the technical aspects um, Hope that makes some sense and answers some of the questions that I was getting. Any more, comment below. Please subscribe and like the page. And we'll keep the videos coming. Stay safe.